the video the other night we were talking about how the tidal forces, um, which result from resultant forces, or at least the horizontal component, which results from the additive or subtractive, depending on which part of the Earth you're on, forces of gravitational force and centrifugal or inertia. Inertia is a little bit of an imaginary force. Um, and so we end up with these two bulges, um, tidal bulges. And the one closest to the moon, which we can see right here, is primarily due to gravity. And the one over here, which is the harder one to explain, um, for the purpose of this class, we're going to say it's due to, um, mostly due to inertia uh, or centrifugal force. So what happens on a typical day is these uh, bulges stay fixed in relation to the moon, uh, meaning they're always pointing towards um, the moon or away from the moon, as the case may be. And the Earth rotates around underneath this bulge of water. By the way, this bulge of water is like ridiculously exaggerated. And what high tide and low tide sort of means when you're looking at this model is that if you were standing here, here's a person, two ears ginormous, uh, you're experiencing high tide. As the earth rotates around, and suppose you were, you know, later on in, oh, later on in the day, you're standing here, you would ex be experiencing low tide. What that really means is you've rotated in and out of the bulge. High tide is just when the bulge is over you. Low tide or, or tide going out is because you're rotating out of that bulge of water. The lunar day um, is an important concept. The lunar day is different than the solar day. Solar day, hopefully, is a term you know already. You should know how long a solar day is. Solar day right here. 24 hours, what we call a day, is really a solar day. And this lunar day is actually 50 minutes longer than a solar day. And this is due in large part because the moon is revolving in its orbit around the Earth um, as well as the Earth rotating on its axis. So we're sort of combining two things. So let's see how this works in this animation I have on the next page. And what I want you to take note of is in this little animation, when um, we're going to get to 24 hours in a minute, this, the moon is directly overhead at 24 hours. Oh, start over again. Let me back up. The moon is directly overhead, and while the Earth is rotating on its axis, the moon is also rotating around the Earth. So in 24 hours, it hasn't caught all the way back up to where the moon is. The moon has moved approximately 50 minutes farther ahead, um, which is why the lunar day is on a basis of 24 hours and 50 minutes. Now let's talk about the size of the bulges, because this is relative to the distance from the sun. Even though the sun is absolutely ginormous compared to the earth or even to the moon, um, significantly more than the moon, it is much, much, much farther away. And we've already talked about how distance has a squared effect on gravitational force or an inverse cubed effect on uh, tidal forces. And because of this distance issue, the solar bulge, the bulge caused by the attraction between the earth and the sun, is a little less than half that of the attraction between the moon and the earth. So when we get a um, high tide, most of it is due to the moon, and then we have a smaller effect due to the sun. This is going to be important in that number, 46% uh, of a solar bulge, is going to be important in, in factoid you should probably remember. We're going to talk about this when we draw uh, the moon phases and the different bulges. Now, the monthly tidal cycle, um, similar to the... Solar day and the lunar day are, um, is different than what we call a sidereal month. So let's talk about that for a second. By the monthly tidal cycle, we mean how long it takes, basically, for the moon to go through all of its phases, from full moon to full moon. And that's a monthly tidal cycle. Um, we're going to call when we have full and new moon spring tides and when we have uh, quarter moons neap tides. A sidereal month is how long it takes for the moon to ro revolve around the Earth. But remember... At the same time the moon is revolving around the Earth, the entire moon-Earth system is also revolving around the sun. And because the definition of the full moon um, is actually a function of where it is in relation to the sun as well as the Earth, we have to take into account that rotation. So I'm actually going to exit out of the keynote for a second, and we're going to... Let's see how this works. We're actually going to watch another animation. And this should be back here. Um... So this is going to show us a sidereal and a synodic month. Synodic month is the same thing as the, the uh, tidal month. So let's press play. So we can see um, 
that we get a new moon when the moon is between the earth and the sun. And we get a full moon. Now that's been exactly a sidereal month, 27 and a third days. The moon rotated once all the way around the earth. But to get to all of it being in a line again between earth, moon, and sun, it actually takes a little bit longer. And that's what takes 29 and a half-ish days. So let me play that again. And I will put the links to this online. Let's try that. New moon, we have Earth, Moon, Sun lined up. And that, say that was over New York. It takes about 27 and a third days for it to be over the same spot on the Earth again. But now it's no longer lined up with the Sun. It takes a little longer, almost two and a quarter days for it to line back up. So let's go back to our keynote. So we're going to have to start talking about moon phases soon, um, but there's a couple of key items here on this slide. You need to know spring tide and neap tide. And both of these have to do with the alignment of the Earth-Moon system. Um, when we have spring tide, uh, that's the highest high tides. We have a large tidal range, high high tides and low low tides. And it's when, um, here's one of my all-time favorite words, syzygy, make sure you know it, that the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun are in a straight line. It could be um, Earth, Sun, Moon. That's an option. It can also be uh, sun, moon, earth. Both of those are in alignment, and any of those are acceptable um, as being syzygy. The lunar and the solar bulges, remember, tides are waves, and when the waves interact with each other, we get constructive interference, which is why we get the highest highs and the lowest lows. Now, neap tide. Neap tide occurs when we're at an angle. Um, the earth and the the Earth is in between sort of a right angle. Here's the Sun, the Earth, and the Moon. And um, the Moon will be pulling this way on the tides. The Sun is pulling in the opposite direction. And we have a destructive interference of the waves. They sort of line up trough to crest. And we get the smallest tidal range. It means highs aren't very high, lows aren't very low, and we don't get much of a difference. This picture is in the book. Um, whoop, let me go back one. Uh, you need to be able to draw this. Um, things to the key parts of this. Um, we have both the solar bulge and the lunar bulge. Solar bulge being bigger, lunar bulge being smaller. Show the moon and the sun and the earth in relation to it. Make sure you can draw that. We're going to practice in class very soon. And moon phases. This should not be anything new, but potentially it is. Um, in this drawing, we would imagine the sun is over here. And it's shining on the earth. You can see the lit up side on this earth. And when the moon is in between, right here, uh, we would call that new moon. It looks like there is no moon because the lit up side is facing away from us. But, as you can see, since we can draw a straight line between the earth, the moon, and the sun, we would be in what's called syzygy, and we would have spring tides. Almost two weeks later, the moon is now on this side. We can see the lit up side, which is now facing us. We're in syzygy again, and we would have spring tides. It takes about two weeks to go from one to the other. The quarter moons um, occur here. It's when the Earth and the uh, Sun moon system make right angles, and quarter moons are associated with neap tides. They, they mention in the book about blue moons being two full moons in one calendar month. They're really not a big deal. They have no astronomical significance, um, but it is what it is. In terms of waxing and waning, we'll go over that in class, but basically waxing is, um, here, let me erase all this. Um, with the rotation of the moon around the earth, waxing refers to um, the appearance of the moon getting bigger, getting smaller. So um, waxing tends to be bigger. So what when we go from new, where it's lit up, um, this is more visible and it's going in this direction. So we go new, waxing, first quarter, waxing, gibbous, full, waning, gibbous, which is like a three-quarter moon, third quarter, and then waning, crescent. Um, and you should probably practice by looking up and figuring out where we're at the, this period of time. We're going to stop right there. We'll do this tomorrow in class or maybe one day. Um, but hopefully that's pretty good.